everybody, Jeremy Blum here. Uh, this is my Tech Bits video log. Today I'm going to do a bit of a question and answer um, about hard drive RAID arrays. This is a question I get a lot, so I, I thought it would be a good topic for my first official Tech Bits uh, video log. I get a lot of questions, how do you set one up, what is it, what different types of RAID are there, what kind of RAID should I use, etc. So I'm just going to go over a little bit um, what RAID is, different types of RAID, how can be implemented, uh, etc. So, I'll get right into it. RAID stands for Redundant Array of Independent Disks, or it can also stand for Redundant Array of Inexpensive Disks, depending on how you're using it. Uh, both acronyms have been used. Basically what RAID is, is it's the process of combining two or more hard drives in such a way that the storage space, the storage space is essentially shared. Uh, this can be for redundancy, increasing the capacity, or an, a number of other reasons. Um, and RAID is an alternative to JBOD, JBOD, which stands for just a bunch of disks. This is how most people have the hard drive set up. You just one hard drive is one hard drive that you see in the operating system. Uh, they're independent storage units. RAID combines hard drives. So there's a few reasons you would use RAID. Um, one, data security or redundancy. Uh, it can be used to basically maintain automatic copies of your data um, or backups. Could result, depending on the type of RAID you use, once again, uh, faster read and write rates, uh, increasing the capacity of a single volume that you see in the operating system, uh, or a combination of any of those things. There are two main ways to set up a RAID hard drive away. There's hardware and there's software. Um, hardware, hardware RAID is basically, you have a chip on your motherboard that handles the RAID information. Uh, this is lower level than the OS. And this is interfaced with the hard drive controller. Um, so this can be, well, f first of all, this, th this means you're not using any CPU cycles to handle the RAID data. Um, and wh what I mean by RAID data is um, the processing that has to be done to set your computer data up to be stored appropriately on your, on your RAID array of hard drives, depending on what kind of RAID array is it, it is, which I'll get, I'll get into in a second explaining those. Um, basically, when you do hard, uh, hardware RAID, the, the operating system, anything above the BIOS, has no idea that the hard drives are in RAID, unless you have a special program installed to monitor them that uh, works with the hardware. But basically, the operating system sees it as one disk, and how you use the drive in the operating system is not impacted at all by the fact that it's RAID. Um, as a result, any computer that has driver support for RAID controller can use hardware RAID. Uh, it doesn't matter what OS it is. Uh, not all motherboards have RAID functionality built in, though, necessarily. And um, the, one of the most common ways is to use a PCI card that has a RAID controller built into it. The uh, thing is, those are usually these are usually pretty expensive. Um, and yes, some a lot of motherboards now do have RAID hardware support on them, but it's not necessarily dedicated hardware. A lot of what it is is um, firmware built into the already existing hard drive controller. And um, basically, that firmware is still using CPU cycles to uh, process the, the RAID information. So it's not technically hardware RAID. It is using hardware at some level, but it's not 100% hardware RAID. 100% hardware RAID is more used in enterprise and, and that kind of thing, um, with sp special chips, uh, server motherboards, or PCI cards to do the processing. And like I said, uh, these RAID controls are generally pretty expensive. Uh, the other option, the other way to do RAID is software RAID. So that's handled by the operating system or some program in the operating system. Generally, uh, depending once again on the type of RAID you're doing, it's a little slower than hardware RAID because it's using CPU cycles to do the RAID processing. Uh, and some RAID schemes require more processing than others. Uh, basically, it's uh, linked to operating system protocols too. So. If you set up a RAID array, a RAID array in a, one operating system, it's not necessarily going to transfer over to another operating system. So that, in other words, like it makes it difficult to dual boot using software RAID because it's at the operating system instead of lower than that. And in the event of a drive failure, it's, a, it's harder to recover, usually, uh, information when it was done by software RAID as opposed to hardware RAID. 